In this experiment, we are going to look at a mixture of acetone and water, also with some blue dye in it, and try to separate the acetone from the water. Right now, the solution is being poured into a graduated cylinder, and we're pouring about 50 milliliters into it. We'll zoom in here. And now that it's clear, it looks like actually the meniscus is underneath that line. So if I was going to guess the volume of what's in there, I'd say around 48, but I didn't get a chance to look at it super closely there. So we're going to add about 48 milliliters or so into the separatory funnel. Now with acetone and water, we've got an organic solvent and an aqueous solution. A lot of times, if that's the case, if we have enough of a carbon chain or if we have enough of a nonpolar area on that molecule we'd separate it into two layers so if this was hexanes and water we'd actually see two layers in the separatory funnel i do not see two layers in the separatory funnel there's only one and the reason why is because water and acetone are soluble or miscible within each other we have a simple distillation apparatus set up here and we've added a funnel to pour in our solution. It would have been nice if we could just separate it in the separatory funnel, but since we can't, we have to do it another way. So we have set up a simple distillation apparatus. With a simple distillation apparatus, we have a heater at the bottom that's plugged into a variac. That heater is heating the 100 milliliter round bottom flask. Right now we're gonna put a boiling chip in to the solution. That round bottom flask is attached to a three-way adapter which then connects to the condenser. The condenser has an inner inner pipe in it basically which allows the liquid that's being condensed to fall into the collection flask and also an outer area which has the water which allows the water to flow through it cooling down that inner area of the tube. The water input always needs to be coming from the bottom so essentially the part of the condenser that's closest to the sink is where the water is coming in from the faucet and that water is flowing through the condenser and then back into the sink through the tube that is closest to the round bottom flask. And right now we have the water flowing. At this point we can start to see some evaporation and condensation. I say we can see evaporation. I can't actually see the evaporation, but I can see the condensation on the round bottom flask. So essentially after the liquid evaporates and acetone has the lower boiling point, so that is what is evaporating and then condensing on the cooler glass area. We need to heat it to the point though where we're essentially at the point of the three-way adapter. So that can actually go to the condenser. Now it looks like the temperature is starting to rise, which means that area of evaporation and condensation is around the thermometer and now it looks like our condensation is happening on the portion of the three-way adapter connected to the condenser. So condensation is happening in the condenser and once that happens that liquid will start to be collected. If you haven't already I recommend take a break and see what the so pause the video and see what the boiling point of acetone is. That is the expected temperature at which acetone will be collected. So all of the evaporation condensation happening, for that to happen, we need to reach the boiling point of acetone before it can actually evaporate to the point where it can condense by where the condenser is. Right now we're collecting acetone in our graduated cylinder. The reason why we're collecting there is because on your worksheet you're asked to assess the temperature for every two milliliters collected. So we need a graduated cylinder so we know we, when we are at the two milliliter mark and then every two milliliters collected we need to monitor that temperature so we can end up graphing our data.
and slowly we're watching each drop of acetone being collected. Ideally, in a lab situation, we could graph this, where ideally even graphing more than every two milliliters and seeing what that temperature is. But I wouldn't be surprised if the temperature was fairly consistent around 58 degrees Celsius for all of the acetone being collected. So as we're collecting this liquid, based on the temperature at which the condensation evaporation is happening, we can be pretty confident that if we are right around 58 degrees Celsius, we're collecting 100% acetone. And it looks like, based on the thermometer, that's exactly what we're doing right now. One minor critique I have for this setup is it looks like our three-way adapter going into our round bottom flask is 100% vertical. That really needs to be straight up and down. That would slightly speed up the process because um, gravity would take those drops of condensation down into the condenser just a little bit quicker. This is a minor issue, but as we're watching this long video, it's good to talk about some things. So we're almost to 10 milliliters, and in this 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, that's pretty much all we can measure. So now would be a good time to go ahead and dump that out very quickly so we don't miss too many drops. Put that back in so we can continue to monitor the temperature versus volume collected to graph our data. And as we're collecting, now we're up at 65 degrees Celsius. So we do definitely do not have pure acetone being collected at this point. And really when I said about 58, that's still slightly higher than the boiling point of acetone. So the purity level of even the first uh, three or four milliliters collected probably wasn't 100%, meaning that acetone is carrying over some water with it as it's being collected at the beginning and now it's definitely carrying a small amount of water over with it as it's being collected. That being said, at this point we've collected about 20 milliliters. So um, considering we started out at about just less than 50, I would say that based on where the temperature is, we probably have at least close to half acetone, half water, but we'd really need to see a little bit further where the temperature goes and how much is being collected.
So right now we're keeping our eye on the thermometer and I clipped out some of the video just to show that I mean, there's no reason to watch it slowly climb, but we're not collecting any liquid right now. So the temperature is steadily increasing because those evaporation condensation cycles of water are getting up near the head of the thermometer at this point, which means that there really is no more acetone to be collected. So of the, so right now we're at 23 milliliters. Of that 23 milliliters, I would say about 20 of that was pure acetone. And at this point, we stopped collecting. We were at 23 milliliters, and that is the solution that was left. So we had about 23 milliliters of mostly acetone, some water, and then all the rest of that, about 27 milliliters, was water, which still had that dye in it. Right now we have a fractional distillation set up and we have beads in the condenser connected to the um, round bottom flask with our solution in it. So fractional distillation offers more area, more distance for the evaporation condensation cycles to happen. Meaning that we can ideally get better separation between the two liquids that we are trying to separate. So at this point, now that we've heated it up, our evaporation condensation cycles are starting. We're essentially boiling our solution of liquids. And slowly we are rising up our condenser, which has beads in it, allowing more sur surface area for more evaporation condensation cycles to happen. We're just about to reach the thermometer where our lowest boiling point solvent is going to start being collected in the condenser. Um, also thinking about the last distillation, so for that simple distillation, we could have kept going with that distillation. So as we were collecting our 23 milliliters of what, what at that point was mostly acetone, what we could have done is maybe collected the first 10 milliliters, isolated that. That would have been fairly pure acetone, just a very small amount of water in it. The next 13 would have been still mostly acetone, but maybe only like a 95% um, acetone, 5% water. So we could have isolated, separated that 13 milliliters, and then we could have kept going. So we could have just cranked up the temperature and then started collecting water at 100 degrees. And then that would have isolated our water with the dye in it. It's hard to say if the dye would come over or not. We'd have to see um, how well water carried over the dye with it. It's possible the dye would have been left behind, but that would have been an interesting experiment to complete. Um, but anyway, so we separated the two, but we could have continued that separation by actually bringing over what could have been water or a mixture of water and the dye. All right, now for this, it looks like we're collecting at 55 degrees Celsius. So that's actually just slightly less than the literature value for the boiling point of acetone. Um, I would say that it's hard to tell exactly how pure that is, but I would, I would guess that this first 10 milliliters collected has a much higher percent acetone in it than the one we did for the simple distillation. Now, some t it's debatable sometimes because sometimes the essentially amount of both liquid and gas solvent suffocating the head of the thermometer isn't quite enough to give an accurate reading. But considering we have the same three-way adapter for both experiments and everything else except for that specific condenser is the same, I would still bet that our purity of at the very least the first 10 milliliters of acetone collected was much higher as we're doing this fractional distillation than it was in the simple distillation.
So in other words, more simply said, very little, if any, water is actually coming over as we're doing this separation. All right, at this point we've collected 20 milliliters. And then taking a look back at the thermometer, at this point now the temperature is starting to rise significantly. So we're almost at 100 degrees. I took out a little video clip there so we didn't have to watch it slowly rise, which means that at this point, we're, we have mostly water fully surrounding the head of the thermometer. So any further drops, the vast majority of what's in that drop would be water rather than acetone.